So, with all five Predacons reviewed, I guess it's time to get on to the main event of... Here comes a new challenger! Greetings fans, hyper fans, and if you're lost looking for videos of cats on YouTube, I may actually have something for you this time. We are looking at the sixth member of the Jinbao Predacons. Uh, this one, I believe, is based on the G1 figure, Katilla. Um, it's quite literally a repaint of um, Rampage. He makes a matching arm on the other side. And apart from a couple of different weapons, he doesn't actually vary at all. So, whilst I will go through those extra couple of accessories that he comes with, the main thing I'm going to talk about is the box. I haven't done an unboxing for the other guys because they're all packaged pretty much identically. Um, the boxes are huge, each of these being maybe about two-thirds the size of Predator King himself. So, if you're buying this in from China, it's quite unlikely you're going to get a box sent with it. Not a major loss, but I will show you what's cool about it, and then get on to the additional weapons. So, returning to my traditional unboxing stomping grounds, let's have a quick fly around the box. Um, the front has gatefold, showing the figure in quite a dynamic pose. He's resting in a clear polythene tray. You have absolutely gorgeous piece of art on this side, lifted completely from the TFC box. You have the same illustration down the side. Picture of the complete set on the back. Exactly the same picture on the back of every single box. Um, handwritten shipping label. Name at the top. And again, detail from that illustration. And on the bottom, barcode. Not for anyone under the age of three. Sad onion. Um... Various details about manufacturing, uh, choking hazards. On the front, you've got a great picture of Katilla, that's Spot Varnish, uh, Jim Bell logo at the top. Link to their Kiki site. And you've got carry handle on the top of it. Now the carry handle actually goes through this yellow internal printed piece so if I can just tilt it up it's actually pretty difficult to get out which means you either have to cut the handle or rip the box cutting the handle far preferable you get the instruction sheet which is pretty much photoshopped out of the TFC instructions uh, which means that when you see things like whether the tail's got a bend in it um, or any other area where they've simplified the design you can kind of gun is very thin but quite reminiscent of the G1 Pretender Beast gun that he had that uh, sat on his back. It's just twisty ties holding him in. Um, actually that's not been particularly uniform through them. Um, some of them have had twisty ties, some of them have had zip ties, uh, quite a lot of them have had a mixture of the two. So there we have Katilla with... Uh, his saber tooth mask. Hmm. 
once again, I think that these pieces, which are supposed to be even, aren't quite. And of course, he comes with the last battle sword for making up the great blade. Um, his eyes are actually a little bit better painted than a lot of them. Um, he's got that blue paint going through, where the rest have pretty standard red or yellow. Um, I'm just going to check to see whether we've got the same problem we did with the other arm. So note here, it actually looks like it's been put together pretty decently. Um, he has a metallicized red visor. And as far as I can tell, the rest of him is moulded pretty much as you would expect it to be. So if I put him off to one side at the moment. Pick up the bonus accessories. Um, let's go back to the main desk. So having already seen him in robot mode in the pack... Let's just have a quick look at the accessories in monster mode. Um, the mask snaps quite firmly on over the face with uh, this bit, I guess, going down the neck. Because the instructions quite helpfully give you no idea about where you should be putting any of his accessories. Um, the gun which on the original Catilla Beast Former sat somewhere there has nowhere to clip in um, I think that might be just a case of going at it with a Dremel but uh, not till I'm a hundred percent sure of where that should be going and the two adapter pieces which apparently will fit all the blades have no use in beast mode whatsoever. They will literally not plug on or in to anything. So um, from a toy that until this point was doing so well at keeping everything together, it's kind of falling apart. Um, the mask itself... Um, Probably one of the low points on quality. It's sort of two half shells pushed together um, and they don't meet up particularly well. Paint apps are pretty good. It's got that metallic blue and these ear vents are in red. Uh, but I'm not really sure how well that actually fits. Um, it puts all the grey here. The original had a big red armour pack here, which these could have been part of it had somebody designed um, but here it just I don't know the grey makes it look far more like an elephant face than a saber tooth tiger um, and if it wasn't for the fact that you needed these two pieces and that large axe to make up Treader King's sword um, this guy would be an easy miss but now, with our sixth and final member of the team reviewed, all that remains is to merge and form Shredder King. Tune in tomorrow to see my review of the supersized Gestalt Warrior. If you've stuck with me this long, give me the thumbs up. If you want the final video in your inbox, hit the subscribe button, comments below, and we'll see you tomorrow. Nice!